Okay, so let's have a look at uh, some Bitcoin technology and also how we integrate that into into blockchain. Okay, so let's start off where we normally start off in computer security with Bob and Alice. So with Bob and Alice, uh, what we want is uh, for them to have their wallets. Okay, so this is the a basic definition with inside Bitcoin technology is that Bob and Alice each have a wallet. They can have multiple wallets if they want, but those wallets will contain uh, not the currency itself, but actually the transactions and most importantly the encryption keys which are associated with any of the transactions. As we'll find if they lose the encryption keys, especially the private key, then they will struggle to uh, get their money back. Okay, so let's say that uh, Bob now wants to send Alice some, some money. So the first thing that he does is that he will generate a 256-bit private key. Okay, so this is a unique key uh, that uh, he will create. So let's actually do that. Okay, so this is an example 256-bit key there. And then what it does is it converts it into a format known as Base 58. So if you've seen B Base 64 before, it's kind of similar, but there are certain characters that are missed out. So on the internet, a zero and an O are often confused. So Base 64 misses out some of the characters which can often be confused. So this is a Base 64 format. And this will be used to identify the transaction ID from Bob. Okay. Then after that, uh, we define our what's that's our with a private key. Okay. So let's now. So from here, what we do is that we now generate an associated public key. So if you know public key technology, then the private key and the public key work together. We can, can encrypt with the public key uh, and decrypt with the private key and vice versa. So the two keys work together. But in Bitcoin technology, the public key is used to prove the identity of either Bob or Alice. So it's not actually used in the encryption process at all. We don't really encrypt anything uh, within inside Bitcoin. What we do is that we sign things. So Bob signs with his private key, uh, as we see, the 256-bit private key. And then anyone who wants to prove that it was Bob, they will then use Bob's public key. And that's an elliptic curve DSA, and that allows us to generate a public key from a private key. Okay, so there we go. Let's say that that's the key there. That's 512 bits. Next, what uh, we do is that we then take a, a hash of that. We take SHA-256. And then, just to make sure, we then do another hash, a 168, 160-bit hash, and we get this RIP EMD 160. And then from there, we produce a, a base 58 ID for Bob. Okay, so this is the this is a, a key identity which Bob will pass to Alice to be able to get a transaction. Okay, so it's this identity here which is used with inside the transaction. So let's see if we can see an example here. Okay, so let's uh, take random. Okay, so this is going to generate a private key. It's going to generate a public key from there. And this is the with and that will produce the address and base 58. So let's generate a new one. And there we go. Okay. So this is the, the basic format that, that we go through. We have our private key. Uh, we then generate the public key from, from there. Uh, we then uh, hash the, the public key and then produce uh, an address from that, which is base 58. 
and we keep the, the private key uh, because we're going to use that uh, uh, later on to be able to sign for, for things. Okay, so that's that's the basic operation that that that, that we have. Okay, so it's important that that you understand uh, really the basic steps that uh, that we are taking uh, there. Okay, so so now let's look at the transaction itself. Okay, so we have Bob and Alice again, and we, of course we have their wallets. As I said, we can have multiple wallets. Uh, but associated with each wallet we have a private key and we have a public key. Okay, so the the private key is used to prove our identity and the public key is used by someone who wants to prove our identity. Okay, so there we are. There's our, our keys that we have and there's an identity for Bob and an identity for Alice. Okay, so there's our keys that we're going to have and what we're going to do is we're going to transfer uh, Bob is going to request some funds from Alice so Bob sends through uh, his ID, his address that's the B64 format of the hashed public key to Alice ok, now what happens is that Alice will now create a transaction and the transaction will have a link to the previous transaction that she made. Okay, so there's a hash in there so that uh, the blockchain can trace back the last uh, transaction. And then what she adds is uh, a signature of the transaction and she provides her own public key to prove that she is Alice. Okay, so it's different from from normal public key encryption where we would distribute our public key to anyone all we do is that we add the public key on to the hashed uh, signature for the transaction so that part is defined as the in part of the transaction then what we do is that we add in the the rest of it so for the out we define that there are three bitcoins in this case being transferred we now define that we're going to use a hash, 160-bit hash of Bob's ID, his address. So we take that address there and we add it into that part there. So now the the transaction has the details that are required. It's the amount of money Alice is transferring three bitcoins to Bob uh, and Bob's ID is in the transaction and then Alice has signed with her private key so she takes her private key and then hash and then creates a signature, an encryption of the transaction with her private key, adds the public key onto the onto the transaction, and uh, then uh, the anyone can actually prove that it was really uh, Alice who produced the transaction. Okay, so there are our keys there. She takes the private key, creates the the signature, she encrypts the transaction and then creates the signature and then anyone she also adds her public key. So she doesn't distribute her public key to anyone. What she does is she adds it onto the blockchain to prove that she uh signs the, the message. Okay, so let's look uh, uh, a bit more in detail at how we now get the transaction to be added on to the public blockchain. Okay, so let's say we've got three people who have made a transaction recently. So what happens is that in, in blockchain, every 10 minutes, all the transactions that have been made are then compiled together and then added on to the blockchain. So let's say we have three transactions that have been made in the last 10 minutes. Okay, so there, those there are the three transactions. Alice has made one, she's transferred money to Bob, and then Eve has another couple there. Then what we have is we have Bitcoin blockchain nodes. These blockchain nodes are responsible for keeping an up-to-date version of the current blockchain from the whole network. So Eve and Alice will pass on the transactions to the, to the nodes 
and then those nodes will have the current blockchain there stored. So the good thing with this is that if we have a problem with any part of the network and one or two of these nodes failed, we still have a replication on other nodes. So within there, uh, within the blockchain, we have the current hash. So this was the hash within the last 10 minutes of the whole of the blockchain. So this hash proves the whole of the blockchain uh, that we have just now. Okay, so each of them will have the same blockchain and will have the same hash. Then what we have in Bitcoin is that we have miners. So miners are re rewarded for proving the work that they will take, that they will undertake to actually create a new hash based on the, the new transactions and the old blockchain. So these are called the Bitcoin miners and they will be rewarded for their task. So then the nodes will send through the transactions and then the Bitcoin miners will actually start to work on creating uh, the, the new hash. So they will add the new transactions onto the old blockchain with the, the hash already and then they will create a new hash. So the challenge that they're given is to create a, a hash which can be quite computationally intensive. Okay, so there's the the old and the new transactions, that's the old hash. And then what the Bitcoin miners have to do is to compete together to create a new hash. Okay, so this shows an example. So this shows what uh, a hash actually looks like. So in this case, this is the new block that's been created. So we can see here there are 2,488 transactions that have been made. And what we see is the is the network who's created it, the Bitcoin mining network that's created it. But you see here that the hash itself has a number of leading zeros. So this is quite difficult because what needs to happen is that we'll take a hash of a hash of a hash of a hash until it actually finds a hash which has preceding zeros. That's quite a challenge and the Bitcoin miners must go ahead and actually keep hashing all the blockchain plus the new transactions until they find a hash which starts with uh, a given number of uh, zeros. Okay, so here's a little example here. So all I want to do is to create a hash which will have uh, some leading a leading zero okay so it's quite a simple task here obviously with the uh, blockchain what we want to do is to create many zeros at the start here but we'll give it a try so we'll try with hello one two three okay it's done it <laughs> quickly <laughs> But we'll try again. Okay, so it takes a hash of a low one, two, three, and then produces this hash, then takes another hash with uh, a one at the end, and it doesn't get there. So eventually it will, and what we'll have is a zero at the start. Okay, so it's added a 19 on the end, and actually managed to produce a hash with which starts with a zero. So with blockchain, this is what uh, happens. Uh, we challenge the miners to be able to produce a blockchain with a certain uh, number of zeros at the start. They will then be rewarded by a certain number of uh, bitcoins for their work and all the nodes on the network will then synchronize uh, with the new blockchain. Okay, so there is an example there of what a, the hash should look like and that you can see it has a lot of preceding zeros there. Okay, so let's look at our blockchain in a bit more detail. So we've got a few transactions coming through. So we'll start off with uh, a certain amount in each of the wallets. Bob, Alice and Eve have 10, 6 and 2 bitcoins together. So the network needs to know exactly how much Bob, Alice and Eve have in their wallets because the blockchain, the Bitcoin network, 
doesn't want anybody to overspend to spend some spend some money that they don't actually have so all along the whole of the bitcoin network network knows exactly for each id how many bitcoins are associated with that uh, address okay so let's take our first transaction so bob sends the e4 bitcoins so now what we'll have is that uh, Bob now has six bitcoins and Eve now has six also. So they've all got the same now. Now in the second transaction, Alice sends to Eve two bitcoins. So then uh, Bob, Eve will have four bitcoins and then Eve will have eight. So we now create the new hash. Once the new hash is created, then the record is now confirmed. And as I said, that happens every 10 minutes on a, on a Bitcoin network. Next, with transaction three, we transfer two Bitcoins from uh, Alice to Bob, Alice to Eve. So we can see now that Eve has 10 uh, Bitcoins and Alice has only two. If Alice now goes and tries to spend four bitcoins, then the transaction will not be allowed. So you can see one weakness with uh, Bitcoin is that uh, everybody knows exactly how many bitcoins everyone has with inside their address. A malicious person such as Eve could create multiple identities, multiple addresses, and it would be difficult to actually trace from there. But the ID, ID is actually stored in the blockchain. Okay, so at the end we'll get our hash and then we've created our uh, blockchain. Okay, so that's been a brief introduction to Bitcoins and blockchains and uh, hopefully it's given you a background uh, on them.